Welcome to Triangle B and I. Today's show is brought to you by Simply Done Concierge. All right, folks, we're halfway through October, which means the holidays will be here in about an hour and a half. So you're going to need to need to be in two, three, or four places at once. Please go to simplydoneconcierge.com. Uh, let us know how we can help you. The team will be there so you can get everything done for the holidays, whether you are traveling or hosting. Hi, everybody. My name is Mike Manning. Each week on Triangle BNI, we bring you a local small business success story. If you are not familiar with BNI, it is Business Networking International, the world's largest networking organization. Our little slice of heaven here in the Triangle, Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill, and the surrounding towns. And each week, 33 chapters and almost 600 members get together, and our goal is to help each other grow our businesses. And our local small business success story this week, out of the wonderful town of Clayton, is Matt Gorman. He owns the Gorman Group Insurance. He is the president of 919 Networking. They meet Thursday mornings at 8.30 a.m. at the U.S. Health Advisors Office on U.S. 70 in Clayton. Good morning, Matt. How are you? Good morning, sir, from the metropolis of Clayton, North Carolina. We are doing well here on Main Street. Uh, getting a little busier there in Clayton these days, isn't it? It is. It is. I think we're at about 45,000 people, and it's scheduled to double every three years right now. So yep. a lot of development, a lot of construction, but that's good for small businesses. It is. And I was going to say you being an independent insurance agent, all these people moving to town that need home and auto insurance, hopefully will work to your benefit. We're okay with it. Yes, sir. We're in a good spot. All right. So Matt's group meets Thursday mornings at the U.S. Health Advisors Office on U.S. 70. He is the president. Uh, Matt, what got you into BNI? I was introduced to BNI from a fellow BNI member. Uh, her name is Michelle Ketchum. She used to be in the Durham, North Carolina chapter. And back then I was working for State Farm Insurance as a uh, employee, salesperson at an office. And she said, you need to do this. You have to do this. BNI is one of the best way to grow your business. She even offered to pay for my first year of membership, and I didn't really understand what it was. I didn't really want to have to owe anyone any favors. I was brand new in insurance. So I was like, oh, I'll look into it. I'll check it out, you know, and didn't really uh, get a chance to reconnect with it and become a part of it until about seven years later. But definitely should have listened to her advice much, much sooner. <laughs> uh, interesting note on Michelle, uh, also a friend of the show. Uh, you are, I think, episode number 211 today. She was either guest number two or guest number three way back when. Wow. Uh, but that's the beauty of being I. I, you know, I tell people each week there's something I learn or confirm that I know, and it's, it's all about relationships. Uh, so how does one get into the insurance world? Well, uh, networking is how I got into it, believe it or not. Uh, and this was, again, before BNI, but I was working for Sprint at the time, managing a cell phone store in Durham, and I started to network. I started to go to some Chamber of Commerce events in Durham, and they did something called speed networking, which I know you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that Triangle BNI runs uh, speed networking every so often, and I was learning the the system and how it works and all these people all right okay here's a card there's a card how do i make an impression how do i get these people to remember me went back to the office sent my thank you emails connected with everybody on linkedin and then about two days later an insurance agent at a state farm office reached out and said hey would you be interested in coming in for an interview so i didn't really do anything other than be out in the community networking meeting other people and I followed up, it seemed like that was enough of a green light for them to give me an opportunity. Mm -hmm. They helped pay for my licenses. They helped me get started. They offered me a salary while I was switching over so I didn't have too much of a commission dip. Uh, and I've been doing insurance ever since. That was November of 2012. What? And again, I think your point is correct. What they saw in you was you kind of got to be a hustler, especially in the insurance world. Yep. That was, uh, in hindsight, that's what they were looking for. And now as a 
a business owner, that's also what I'm looking for when I'm looking for new staff or adding salespeople. Uh, what was the what was the world of selling phones and stuff at Sprint way back then? What was that like? It was fun. Uh, my first job out of college was actually working for a social media company. We had moved to San Francisco because that's where the uh, angel investors were. So we lived in uh, downtown San Francisco for almost two years. So I've been a part of mobile technology, cell phones, social media my whole life. Uh, having a phone attached to me for a couple of years in mobile was probably good for where we are today with technology and where I am in business. One of the things that sets us apart from the competition is you get a 919 number. There's no 1-800 number. Mm -hmm. There's no phone tree. They can call us directly and I don't mind that phone ringing. I don't mind it being in my pocket and connecting with my customers because I feel like that's something that we're losing in the commodity of insurance, uh, less connectivity, less relationships, more press three for this, press two for this. Um, I feel like that sets us apart and it doesn't bother me at all to make sure that I'm reachable by all my clients. B and I has taught me many things. One of the more powerful ones is to shop local. Uh, nothing against these big, uh, national and international brands. They serve their purpose. But if, I, I think there's certain numbers you should have, certain people you should have their cell phone number. Uh, I think your CPA and your insurance agent are right up there. For me, it's my chiropractor because, you know, I'm old. Uh, but there's something to be said for being able to pick up the phone. Is And I, I go back, so this would have been 2017 or so. I had just bought a minivan, which I love minivans, always have. And... When I bought it, I was asked by the person to the car dealership, do you want gap insurance? And I said, nah, I'm good. I got real good coverage. Well, it turns out one day I got T-boned and would have, that gap insurance would have been nice because it would have saved me about 8,500 bucks that I had to pay back, right? Yeah. Uh, but I had my insurance agent. This was at 9.15 on a Thursday night. And I had the cell phone number and I called him and he answered and walked me through that. So I'm with you. The value of a local number just puts people at ease when they call you. And I know they're like, Matt, I know it's Saturday. It's like, nope, Mike, keep talking. Right? Because you're there. You call me for a reason. Just but, get it out. But, that, but that's what we're buying. I'm not really buying insurance. I need insurance. I'm buying a guy that'll take my call. Yeah, and we want to get... We want to get the phone call from our customers whenever they get in an accident. Mm -hmm. We don't mind being the first phone call. If somebody's injured, always call, you know, 911, ambulance first. Um, but especially when you get a ticket, we want to get a phone call when you get a ticket because there's two mm -hmm. separate paths of points in North Carolina. There's driver's license points and then there's insurance points, which in the court system and through police officers, Usually they're going to be talking about driver's license points. We deal with insurance points, which are like multipliers on your insurance. So we have uh, a team of trusted legal professionals in Wake County, Johnston County, Harnett County, that we would tell you to go to to help you get the best possible resolution for that so that it keeps your insurance as low as possible. Some people say, oh, I don't want to pay for that up front. If you look at the cost, one ticket's going to stay on your record for three years. And if it goes up $50 a month for 36 months, it's much better usually to try to get a legal professional involved to try to get that ticket dismissed or lowered just so that the impact is less on your insurance. And there are folks, there are lawyers out there that they wake up every morning loving going to court to help stuff like that. And you're right, there's ways to mitigate. Uh, damage to the driver's license they may back it off even if they back it down five miles which reduces the fine reduces the ticket you know things like that mm -hmm. but i've always matt that's a good point i hadn't thought about uh speeding tickets because i always figure you guys yep. have taught me don't call the claims number first call your local agent talk mm -hmm. this through figure out i didn't even think about the speeding tickets every oh. time man it's the because everybody speaks, almost everybody that you're going to come in contact with is going to speak a different language. They're going to be talking about driver's license points. And no one in the process 
deals with insurance and the cost associated mm-hmm. with it, right? An 11 mile per hour ticket versus a nine mile per hour over ticket yep. it could be thousands of dollars over three years. Just call your insurance agent and say, hey, here's what I got. What would you recommend that I do? Um, that that could be one of the more important phone calls, especially with larger families, because you have such a higher risk of another person getting into a ticket in that three year time period. It's an exponential multiplier on top of that. So always call me for tickets. Always call me for accidents. If you're watching this and you're part of BNI, you call me anyway. I just want people to get insurance advice before they get courtroom advice. That's all. Here's the other cool uh, educational moment I've got from insurance agents is most everybody has insurance, but not everybody has the correct coverage. Yep. There was a a law just passed recently that will take into effect next year, maybe beginning of 2025. I'm not sure of the effective date, but they're raising the minimum limits on car insurance. So if you were to come into an office and say just, whatever I need to stay legal or keep me legal or whatever my bank needs, right? Uh, Those minimum limits now have almost been doubled. And if you think about it, that makes sense. Cause if you hit, if you hit a Chevy Tahoe seven years ago versus hitting it now, right now, they're almost a hundred thousand dollar vehicles, depending on which one you get those limits for property damage, liability need to be increased because rear ending a car now could be twice as expensive as it was five years ago, just like the housing market. Well, and we don't look at it that way. We look at it as, oh, the state says this minimum is good. Oh, it must be fine, but it does not take into effect the Tesla you hit with three drivers. One of them is life flighted to the hospital. And all of a sudden you just, your limit is way in the rear view mirror. Tell me, tell me the last time you did something that was the minimum that was good for you. Yeah. Oh, great line. Yeah. Right. Minimum, yeah. Uh, minimum amount of exercise, minimum amount of yeah. time off, right? Minimum, minimum is a bad word. It's not a, there's no, there's not really a positive connotation to that unless we're talking about a minimal amount of damage. But if you're paying for insurance and you don't have enough coverage, you're basically paying for something that doesn't cover you at all. It's like, buying a quarter of a blanket and using it to go to sleep at night, you need to have, I don't like using the word full coverage because it doesn't really talk about what's included in there. Kind of a blanket statement that people use outside of the insurance industry, but you're purchasing not enough coverage to do exactly what you think it's doing for you. It's kind of like the boss that hired you way back when he goes, Matt, I need you to make a minimum of 20 outbound calls a day. If that's all you did, dude, you would not be sitting here today with your own office. <laughs> yep. Minimums, very rarely, man, are minimums a good thing, you know? Yeah, my brother is, uh, he'll, we keep laughing about uh, when when he does pass, hopefully many, many years from now, the, the amount of sayings he has, we're going to have to build a bigger headstone every year because he just, he's got, my boys love all his one-liners. And one of his, one of his is, what's the least I can do here? Now we laugh because it's usually when the, his kids ask him something or his other family members, what's the least I can do here? But you're right, man. There's not much good that comes from. Nope. Stay um, away from that. Stay away from the minimums. That's yeah. my insurance advice. It really, if you step up a tier or even two, the cost is not that dramatic. No, we're not even going to break. We're not even going to break a double digit monthly increase. If you go from the bare minimum to double that coverage, it's not, I'm, I'm just seeing $9 could be like the most yeah. that that would go up each month. And what that does, for those of you who don't know what your coverages are, there's three numbers. It's going to be bodily injury per person, bodily injury per occurrence. So like if there's multiple people involved, that middle number is the most amount of money that they'll pay for bodily injury. The third one is the one that's becoming a little bit more uh, troublesome or worrisome is property damage. So my home, 1,600 square feet, bought it for thousand dollars back in like 2018. Now it would appraise or need to be rebuilt at over $300,000. 
if I were to wreck uh, into somebody's house or garage or even a fence, fences are twice as expensive now. You only have $25,000 of property damage on that policy if you get the minimums. So if you hit a fence and a little bit of a house, or if you hit, again, rear end one of those Tahoe's or somebody's got a nicer car, you live in one of those nicer areas, you're a private um, private school attendee, right? Your kids go to a private school and you're in the carpool lane and you hit something that's got a foreign uh, emblem on it, that $25,000 may not be enough. And people just won't realize it until it's too late. They'll get a check for any kind of damage if they damage their vehicle, but now we have to pay for an extra $7,000 because they did $32,000 in damage, all because they wanted the minimums. Well, and this goes back to my gap insurance moment. Uh, I think it was going to cost me 125 bucks, maybe 175 and it mm-hmm. ended up costing me about 8700 bucks. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, yeah, get the correct coverage. And I was stupid, and I tell people now, yeah, the answer is yes. If they ask you, the answer is yes. And the next car we buy, would you like that? It, yes, we would like that. So, some companies now offer something similar. Um, it's not it's, it's not necessarily gap insurance, but uh, a few of the companies that we have as carriers will offer repair and replacement costs. Mm-hmm. So, if you total the vehicle in the first five years, they'll actually buy you a brand new vehicle of the current year make and model. So, if you wreck your 2019 you know, Ford Explorer, Sport, or XLT, whatever it is, you may be able to get a brand new 2024 right now if you were to choose that coverage whenever you first added the vehicle. So make sure you ask about gap insurance and what it is with your current insurance agent. If Mike said gap insurance and you're like, what? That's not covered. Make sure you have those conversations. You pay your insurance agent a lot of money every year. They are, they, they should be uh, willing to sit down with you and go over all those coverages for the amount of money you pay. Yeah. I think that after, after my accident where two kids were joyriding through a neighborhood, um, they should have changed it to dumbass tax because it was me for not buying it, but I don't think they'll change that in the state record book. So, uh, do you remember your first policy you wrote? I do. I do. It's still a customer of mine. They're good friends. They're out in Concord, North Carolina, Mm -hmm. uh, the Wootens. And uh, I appreciate them for always supporting me and being that first milestone uh, customer. Wait, Whenever I branched out on my own. Would he? And also all the way back 12 years ago to State Farm. So I've, relationships are key, man. People will follow you no matter what badge is on your shirt or brand is on your door. If you just treat people like people and not dollar signs, Dollar signs will follow, but so will the people. Yep. They'll, they'll never leave you because of how you make them feel. Um, but I definitely remember them, and they're still friends to this day. Get to see their kids grow up. What's going to be cool is they may be one of the first customers that I insure, but I also get to insure their kids, right, from start to finish, yep. right? When they had their kids, I was there. Now those kids are going to be driving a vehicle, and I'll be able to have that conversation with them about, deductible and what it means and driving safety. We do that for all of our new drivers too, but that'll be neat 15, 16 years later to have that conversation with them. Were you nervous transacting that first policy? Uh, I was nervous at the beginning at State Farm (laughs) just because I didn't know. I didn't know everything about the product. The more product knowledge that I have, the more confident, smooth, and even quick if we if we can or need to right i can get through those transactions uh with the product knowledge so in the beginning it was just a lot of reading a lot of training videos just like you would think in a room with no windows just like clicking the next button you know learning about what it does but coverage changes every every year every renewal there's additions and and removals from policies so we do have to stay up to date on that we have to do ceus every Two years to keep our licenses active so we're always learning we're always engaging in the education of insurance and the and the platform can i assume you are a good test taker because you are at this level of insurance owner terrible test taker. oh good terrible testing <laughs> you scored just the minimum to pass <laughs> no minimums here mike 
No, but it's uh, test taking. Test taking is just you know some people have test anxiety, some people have stress with that. It's more just uh, it's an ethic. It's an ethical compass with these questions that they ask, right? If so and so does this, and they have this much damage on their vehicle, and they file a claim, but it ends up costing this amount of money. What should X person do in that situation? So a lot of insurance testing and CEs are focused on ethics and making the right decision, customer privacy, and making sure that you stay current with all of the, the most recent like laws and regulations. So uh, we have to take required ethics and flood training every year. It's a, a part of the certification, but the rest of your hours that you have to do, the other 24 or whatever can be anything within the insurance scope. But they definitely focus heavily on ethics and flood insurance to make sure that people know it's not included in your homeowner's insurance. And if you want it, you have to buy a separate policy. Now, when you are not saving people money and giving them great coverage so they can sleep well at night, you are a competitive barbershop singer. Mike, would, would so that, glad you did your research. Yes, sir. Would that be correct? Uh, oh, one moment, please. <laughs> oh, gee. Good old Norman Rockwell, <laughs> uh, barbershop quartet. Yep, portrait. That's going to be going up here in the new office shortly. I like it. Man, I've been singing. I've been singing barbershop acapella music probably since 1999, 2000. Since I was no, it has to be sooner than that. 98, like when I was probably 12, 13 years old. Is I was. Go ahead. Is that a gene handed down from mom or dad? Uh, I found out after I got into it that my grandfather has done barbershop singing for decades. Nice. So it was just musical theater, right? I, I, I don't know if you know this, Mike. I'm a little bit of an extrovert. <laughs> Dick, yes. A <laughs> little bit of a ham. Give me a microphone or a camera or a podcast. Yep. Love it, right? Someone encouraged me to do a musical theater audition at my school, and I was cast in a musical called The Music Man. Love it. And I was put into the barbershop quartet in that show yep. and been singing ever since. Uh, most recently, my uh, singing accolades, I've won two championships for the North South Carolina, Georgia region. And I've also been on the board of directors for the international organization that represents barbershop, the barbershop harmony society. I believe here's my, Oh, wow. Moment. I believe in that movie, the, that quartet was called the Buffalo bills. How about that? Huh? Love that. Yeah. Opie, uh, by the way, Opie before he was Opie was in that movie. He was, I'm impressed. Uh, I'm impressed Mike. Um, golly, why, why am I forgetting his name in the movie? Young kid. Anyways, uh, so you just decided. Oh, Ron Howard. Yeah, Ron Howard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I forget his. Yeah. Um, so you just just de decided to go try out. Had you been singing to yourself, and you thought, oh, that'd be fun to do one day? I've done. I did chorus or choir in mm -hmm. school. Uh, it was just uh, a couple friends that were like, little encouragement, and best mistake I ever made, man. Unlocked. Unlocked my performance and performing and um, extrovert muscle gene, whatever it is. But it turns out it's been in my family, and I didn't know. But my grandfather and I, when I was a little kid, my mom still has these tapes. I would have this old, like, Little Tykes or Play School mm -hmm. is what it was, uh, recording device with a little microphone. And we would send tapes back and forth when I was a like three to six year old, um, just singing songs back and forth to each other. Him talking to me, hey, how you doing, Matthew? Love, love to see you Thanksgiving. Here's a song for you, you know. Um, so yeah, once I learned about him singing barbershop, it all just kind of made sense. So music's a music's my favorite thing in the world. Definitely something that now where I am in business, I can take a little bit more time and money and. Uh, do more of it or help others get involved in it. Um, trying to get more involved in local Clayton, like community theater and setting up a scholarship for um, 
graduating seniors that are going for like voice or vocal performance or anything like that. So definitely where my passion is. So would love to use the vehicle as a, uh, or the business as a vehicle to help with that in the community. Can you enter a contest, a music contest as a solo barbershop singer? Or do you always need a quartet? Four part harmony. That's right. the definition. Four part acapella harmony. Yep. That's the definition of the style. So do you have your be team? You and three others. I, you have your team every time. Same team, different team. We uh, we all know a lot of the similar songs, so eight to ten of us can get together and split up into two groups. And, hey, do you know that one? Yep, some of the music's been around for 100, 200 years. So. Um, some of the new stuff, though, you sing like a Bruno Mars song in four-part harmony, and some Ooh. of the old guys are like. Ooh, I bet that's good. I yeah, like Bruno. Bruno should be the halftime performer at every other Super Bowl. He's that good. He is a showman and a He's performer a and a singer. Yeah. He's awesome. I agree. So, all right, that was my next question. I don't think there's any new barbershop songs have been written recently, but you can just take another song and redo it. Rearrange. Yep. Rearrange. Okay. In the barbershop style. Yep. So you'll create, if you, you look at sheet music for the piano or it's got chord structure there, right? So you just create four notes instead of one. And um, some people make their living off of arranging contemporary acapella pieces. Think of Pitch Perfect, mm -hmm. right? If you look up Deke Sharon, some of those guys, they arrange that music for college acapella groups. Same thing in barbershop. Once you learn the style of music, they make their living doing that. Can you arrange a song? Absolutely not. All right. Which part of the four-part harmony do you sing? I sing the high tenor part. Oh, okay. So I sing the uh, the very high, uh, almost falsetto part mm -hmm. of the uh, of the quartet. So there's four parts. There's the tenor, again, high part. There's the lead or melody, uh, which is going to be the basically the the same tune that you would hum or sing for any song that you hear on the radio you have the bass part or the lowest voice and then the baritone part will kind of fit in between the uh the lead and the bass and fill in whatever note we need to make it that barbershop sound do some of the members of a quartet sing different parts or do you know or do you focus on one that's kind of where you stay yeah, some can. Uh, there's a few people that have won. There's an international competition every year. Uh, this year it'll be in Cleveland. Last year it was in Louisville. But some people have won on three out of four voice parts. So wow. they have yet to have somebody win on all four. But uh, surprisingly, most bass singers have really good falsetto voices. Uh, lead singers are usually the crooners, right? And then the baritone people are like the IBM engineers that uh, can like fit Fit that note in that perfect spot every time. Uh, different, different types of people for different different types of uh, of voice parts, but usually the analytical ones, the they're the baritones because it's a little bit a little bit harder than most parts. And what was the last competition you won? Last competition I won was right before uh, right before we started the business, and that was in November of. 2019 we won in savannah georgia the name of the quartet was called word play oh. and we had some like dapper light blue suits and fancy ties and it was an excuse to like buy a new suit every year you know for competition but i've been competing probably for the last seven eight years took a little break because of covid and now i've just been a spectator since we had our kids and uh it takes a lot of time rehearsing anybody who's done anything sport related or musical related. It takes a lot of time to rehearse. So I'm enjoying being a, a dad for every minute that I'm not here hanging out in the office. Do either of your kids share that gene and the interest? They, uh, they know what barbershop is. They, uh, they can sing great, which is like such a, so awesome for me as a musical father but uh, i was totally prepared for it not to be and would still love them just the same 
But uh, I don't know if it's this Disney movies growing up or singing to them all the time, but uh, I've been able to take my five-year-old to three shows and they're starting to sing uh, some more contemporary stuff, even from some of those Disney movies that she's watched as a kid. And now she's able to recognize them. Dad, that's from, that's from the Rapunzel movie or dad, that's from, you know, uh, princess Fro like that. That's really cool for me to experience, but, uh, haven't been able to take the three-year-old out yet. She probably couldn't sit through one of the, uh, one of the shows yet. Now, when you are at some sort of an event, whether it's just somebody singing casually or there's a competition that you're not involved in, are you uh are you judgy McJudge when like ooh or to go oh wow no. look at him trying hard? <laughs> yeah, you can't do that because it's so. Oh man, think about like people's fears, right? Mm -hmm. Public speaking, death, and then singing is probably mm -hmm. up there too. You can't. You can't critique or ridicule or or even coach unless someone's willing and ready to receive it. It's such a vulnerable state sharing your your thoughts and feelings and expressions through music uh, because it's you, it's your voice, it's part of your body. It's not like you can really change it. Like you have to be very very careful with how you how you offer that advice or critique or coaching. You have to be very um, very focused on praise, very focused on forwarding the individual or the ensemble. Um, as, as long as you can sustain talking, right? That's all singing really is. There's a couple, couple people in the population that actually are like monotone. They can only speak and sing in like one tone of, of voice. Uh, but everybody else has the capability. So you never, ever want to give them any kind of reason to not explore or be afraid to share that with somebody else got to be always good job great job keep going mm -hmm. you know when you are having a good day and you're in line somewhere waiting on something do you find yourself breaking out into song and not realizing you're singing out loud where people can hear you no nope, i've gotten that under control definitely uh my karaoke years helped me get that out of my system All right uh but now it's just uh Little tunes or little things that we use to help the girls like remember things, uh, songs that'll help with things around the house that we're trying to get done. I'm really just trying to use it as almost like mnemonic devices for the kids because they enjoy it. We've gotten them to remember our phone numbers, their birthdays, uh, our address, right? Uh, in case they ever get lost or they ever need to talk to somebody, they have those ready to go. And, and music is such a great communicator that it's worked out really well for us. So. I keep uh, I keep it all inside, even though you may think because of how much I talk that that's a problem. But I'm pretty good in line these days. Uh, speaking of karaoke, what is your go-to song? My heart will go on from Titanic because oh, it's never expected Lord. ever. Yeah, so uh, falsetto. Big guy gets up there. Yep. Great, great beard. You know, yep. well manicured, everything, and then Celine Dion comes out of his mouth. Then we hand out a couple of business cards and we let everybody know what we do for business. Yeah. You know? Uh, what kind of reaction do you get from that when you start singing that song? If you can see audience faces, what are you picking up on? Yeah, man. If it's late at night and they've uh, they've enjoyed themselves, you know, there's gonna be some there's gonna be some applause. But I've definitely done it in the wrong rooms, <laughs> and uh, nobody cares. Yeah, sometimes you got to know your audience, and sometimes you really don't care because that's what I'm saying yeah. tonight. Got to protect the pride and the ego in those moments and just walk out and be like, have a great night, guys. So will you ever be a choir director at your kid's school? Um, no, I don't think so, but I'll do whatever I can to support it. I love the arts. I don't want them to ever go away. I think it's a very important way to express yourself. I think it helps with... Um, lessening or slowing rates of depression and suicide and uh the arts are just such a escape for people and anything i could do to help with that in the community especially through my kids i'll be all about it that's going to be something i'd love to support uh, i don't see myself getting involved too much in 
in the school. I used to direct a men's chorus in uh, in Raleigh that was a barbershop group. And I put the brakes on a lot of that when we had the kids. So like I said earlier, now I'm just a, a spectator in the barbershop world. I'll be up as close as I can, support all my friends and, and people singing. But uh, that's the best thing about music is that you could you could be in it, you could perform it, you can also sit back and just listen and enjoy and and get its benefits, you know, through multiple ways without being on stage or with an instrument in your hand. Yeah, there's two universal languages. One is music, the other one's food. I think people connect without ever having to talk just through both of those mediums. I've always thought that so. I was watching Ocean's Eleven yesterday, the one when they were in Italy or in Amsterdam, and they are playing the Italian music. It's like, all right, I can listen to that. Good stuff. So uh, one day, if one of your kids wants to be on American Idol and they go try out and they're not chosen, would you be that dad on camera telling Simon Cowell how wrong he is and he doesn't know his business? No way, man. <laughs> no way. And I mean, that's... Oh goodness, Mike! You're gonna open up like parenting can of worms on on yeah. there. Like, really? You're gonna do that? <laughs> Only for you, man. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to get too deep into that. But it just every. It's all practice, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. Everything that we do is practice, right? Even even the cliche statements about like failing or like you know try try again, get up bootstraps, all that stuff is all just, if you consider it practice and lifelong learning, there's no real, there's no real breaks or failures, right? It's just on the, on the journey of mastery of the skill or happiness, right? Whatever you want. So no, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. I would be, I would be there for my kids and make sure that they know they're loved and they did it as good as they could. And if they want to do better, then I'm there, I'm there to help them get whatever the next goal is, you yeah. know? And I don't think any of those kids whose parents told Simon, you'll hear from us again. I don't believe we've heard from any of those, but again, you're defending your kid and you know what? Uh, so speaking of disappointment, you're a technology guy. Can you help me and, and my kind out? You know, we're like a half hour, 45 minutes older than you. And we struggle with, uh, technology and what should we just start staying away from? <laughs> yeah. Get, uh, <laughs> Always get the best cell phone that you can. Always get the best iPhone or Android or whatever you can so that you don't have to buy another one every year because it's going bad or failing or anything like that. But other than that, the big thing in regards to insurance is like cybersecurity. Yeah. And just making sure that you uh, – my biggest advice right now to people is password management and making sure that they're either changed or they have a program that helps them rotate those and change them out. Some of the business insurance policies we have have uh, cybersecurity coverage for like every file or identity theft. Um, we also even have like ransomware coverage where there's, if somebody holds your client's data or a deed to a home from a closing or something like that, uh, there's even like up to $25,000 in ransom that's included in some of these insurance policies if you get those identity theft or cyber security coverages. So just protect your passwords, man. Check them often. And uh, if you see anything crazy in your bank account, talk to your banker, but also ask your insurance agent if there's any coverages to help reimburse for that. Because people who've gone through identity theft know how expensive it is to get, get your name back. Get your credit score back, right? Get all that back. Yeah. And I learned something a few years ago. Usually when we sign up for something, they want to ask for your mother's maiden name or the high school you went to or your first pet, which turns into uh, passwords for people, which hackers can get easily, that you don't have to put any answer that even can be read or make sense. They just want you to put letters in the box. So don't right. feel like, oh, I've got to put Millbrook High School or you know stuff like that. Just type in about eight or nine letters or four and just be done with it because hackers, they're smart and they're looking for stuff like that. So I didn't know that. I don't think I've been hacked before um, for anything serious. Uh, they're going to be pissed off when they get into my bank account. They're going to be mad at me and they're probably going to come back even harder. It's like, dude, we did all this work for that. It, well, it, think about like your first dog. If it's yep. your current dog, it's on your Facebook. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. 
Like your wait, mom's maiden yeah. name is probably on her face. We did so we did thirty careful. hours of work for an account that has one comma, just barely has one comma. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Crazy. Man. Uh, and then the other thing, though, people like to pay bills on their phone. I'm not as big a fan of that as others are because ge generally our computers are better protected than our phones. And I just write, have you had people talk? I agree. Yeah. I agree. You're, um, anytime that you're using like a free public Wi Fi, it's yep. a risk. Um, yeah. But there's also services where you can set up temporary cards, temporary um, debit cards, or temporary credit card numbers. That you can use and if it ever gets compromised you just click refresh and it gives you a new number for you to use virtually while you're out there so Ooh, that's there's, good to know. there's ways to avoid that as well i could i don't have any of the services offhand that's fine. but i know that that's a safe way for you to link multiple accounts to one randomized card that you can use whenever and if something happens to it you just push a button and it gives you new numbers yeah, because a lot of us go to Panera's or Starbucks or a lot of these places, sit and work for a couple hours. Like, oh yeah, before I go, let me do this, and it's their free service. Like anybody can get in there if they want to. And be careful. Oh, I know, I know. All right, so we've been putting Matt's phone number on the screen here, um, folks. If you just need a question answered, just to see if what you got is what you should have, please give Matt a call. Uh, he'll answer any question for you. He's not going to sell you on being becoming a client. You may find out I need to be, but he'll answer your question. Just find out if your policy's good. So is that the tip of the day, Matt, when people sign off from the show here? Just go look at their policy just to see what they have. Yeah. Um, it's always good to ask what the insurance agent has. Like, what kind of coverage do you have? Right. Ooh. You would ask that you would ask that to somebody who you're buying a vehicle from. Like, do you? Do you have one of these cars, right? What kind of uh, what kind of solar panels do you have on your house, right? Are these the the same kind and quality that you would install, knowing what you know, with what you can get as a member of the company? Uh, that's always a great question. I have my coverages on uh, like a, a screenshot here on the desktop that I could show people at any time, just so they could see these are the coverages that I have. This is what I believe in. Uh, if you ever are in doubt and you think that someone's steering you the wrong way or you don't need the coverages, most recently I I let someone off the hook completely and I said, please, I know this is a brand new policy idea of a personal liability umbrella, right? I, if you have, do you have a financial planner? She said, yes. And I said, why don't you do this? The next time that you talk to your financial planner, why don't you ask them? What's your number? What are what's your what's your assets? What are you worth? And what number do they think we need to protect? And if that number is X, then this is the policy that should be put in place to provide those coverages. The lady called me directly from her financial planner's office <laughs> the following Tuesday and said, Hey Matt, we'd like to go ahead with that policy. I've got I can't remember his name here with me now. Do you mind talking to him for a few minutes? I love when people are getting other opinions to help support the suggestion from the insurance agent. And that was a very, very fulfilling conversation. They're really good about that. They even recommended a little bit more coverage than we had thought because of their income projection over the next few years. And it just allows us not to have to make any changes or review the policy as frequently. But you, with the current climate, you should always be reviewing your insurance every two years right now. And feel free to just talk to your insurance agent about which company do you have your coverage with, why, and would you recommend those kind of coverages for everybody? Find out some reasons. Don't be afraid to ask questions. We're always asking questions of you feel free to shoot them back, put us on our heels and find out why we're recommending those coverages so that you're not put into a template or a form that doesn't apply to you. It's just something that they do to make it easy for the office. Make sure you ask the right questions. And if you need to know what those questions are, just send me your policies. We can review them and I'll send you back to your agent and you'll know exactly what to ask for so that you're covered the right way.
Very nice, folks. And that's the type of value you get chatting or doing business with Matt. So I recommend you do that. Uh, Matt, thanks for coming on the show today. I believe you're the first barbershop uh, championship or first barbershop champion on the show. So I always like first. Two-time champion, please. Well, then you're the first two-time champion. That I know for sure. So anyways, uh, enjoyed having you on the show. Good luck with everything. I hope the uh, uh, 2023 winds up to be a good business year for you. Yes, sir. We're making our first full-time staff hire November 1st. So big move for us. Three years since we started the business on our own. So uh, a cool milestone. And I just appreciate you guys letting me on here, being a part of BNI, being a part of the podcast. And shout out to Mike for doing member success training at our chapter last week. Huge value. Make sure you guys plug into BNI and use the resources available to uh, help grow your chapter, influence your chapter in the right direction so that you can be successful. Cool. Thank you, sir. And we will see everybody next time on Triangle BNI. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by StreamingGear.com and DeltaForce.net.